So here we go. Welcome to Teaming Up for Victory, a first place for health webinar. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you to the webinar that's really going to focus on teaming up, doing things together, and uh, how to stay healthy together. Tonight, we have um, Bill and Pam Farrell joining us, and I am going to um, open us up in prayer. So, Lord, we're so glad that everyone is here. They're joining from all over the country and the world even, Lord, around the world, and we thank you for that, and we ask that you bless our speakers today, Bill and Pam Farrell, and give them your Holy Spirit. Fill them to overflowing. Let us also open our ears and our mind and our hearts to hear what you may have for us today from them. And we ask this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. And so amen. I am, amen. I am happy to introduce Bill and Pam Farrell. They are co-directors of LoveWise. It is a, a ministry that focuses on um, just loving and wise love, I think. They're authors of 46 books, including best-selling, Men Are Like Waffles and Women Are Like Spaghetti. The Farrells are, have been happily married 39 years, are parents to three children, three sons, three daughter-in-laws, and five grandchildren who all enjoy beach days, boating outings, kayaking, paddleboarding, hikes, and biking near their, near their home on a liveaboard boat docked in Southern California. And yep, as you can see, I'm going to stop talking so you can see that. Hey, welcome everybody. Um, so nice to have you aboard. I should say ahoy. Oh, cute, hon. <laughs> hey, it's great to have you all with us. And we are just very, very proud of all of you for wanting to make a difference in your life and to live long and strong and keep yourself healthy enough that you can accomplish all that God wants to do in your life. Yeah, so we'll be sharing a three simple tips and it's the acrostic for FIT. Um, so if you want to write on a piece of paper, F-I-T, those are the three tips that we'll give you tonight in order to team up for victory with your spouse, with your friends, with your family, the people that are most important so that everybody in your, um, you know, your love circle, um, the people that you really care about, those vital relationships, everybody's health moves forward. So we'll jump right in. Is that okay, Helen, to jump right in? Okay. So the first uh, step in FIT is you want um, focus for forward movement. And so focus for forward movement. Um, I'm going to have Bill tell his story because oftentimes we get focused because there's like, um, an alert <laughs> that goes up like we live sure. very close to the opening of the ocean and there's a lighthouse and when there's um, bad storms the lighthouse puts off this really loud like ah uh, horn and it gets everybody's attention and sometimes God sends those warnings so that we have a chance to get our act together so we can live longer and stronger so bill why don't you tell your story okay because unfortunately it doesn't take any skill at all to live unhealthy if you want to live healthy you have to develop self-discipline and it starts with where your mind is at and so throughout our lives we get reminders God is very faithful, and there's these wake-up calls that happen mm -hmm. that remind us that we have to stay focused and we have to stay self-disciplined if we want to uh, to have the health that we're you know we carry in our heart. And for me, there were I've had two wake-up calls. The first one was uh, I was right in the middle of my career. I, I was mid 40s, and we were going like the church was going, the books were going, the conferences were going, our kids were going, and life was like just all teenagers. Yeah, life was just very intense and very, very focused, <laughs> and we felt invincible. And I know as a man, I especially felt invincible, like nothing's going to get in my way. I'm just going to charge through every obstacle, and we're going to keep this train moving. And you have to know a little bit about us. We were both athletes in high mm -hmm. school and college. So um, we were used to being athletic. And then um, things started to change in our schedule. We started sitting on the bench, cheering for our kids instead of, like, working out with them. <laughs> but so we were out on a, on a tour. We were, we were speaking at conferences. And I wasn't feeling well. And I was pretty sure I had, had a sinus infection. So I went to a doctor. 
to get treated for a sinus infection. And he looked at me and said, Bill, how long have you had high blood pressure? And I looked at him, I said, I, I don't have high blood pressure. And for me, that was a big deal because it runs in my family. My grandfather died in his 40s because of a stroke due to high blood pressure. My dad had a stroke in his late 40s because of high blood pressure. And I had decided I wasn't going to participate. I was going to eat well. I was going to exercise. And I was just not going to be part of the high blood pressure club. And suddenly my genes caught up with me. And I was one of the fortunate people because I can feel it when my blood pressure is up. My joints ache and my, it feels like somebody has their thumbs behind my eyeballs and is trying to push them out of my head. So I can, I can actually feel when my blood pressure is up. And so I just assumed I'm going to get back home. I'm going to meet with my doctor. We're going to get this all figured out and get back on track. And my body wasn't cooperating. That my blood pressure was very erratic. I was, uh, I, I, I was experiencing days where at six o'clock I was exhausted. The super productive guy was going to bed at six and I was praying for a miracle like that he wouldn't have a stroke like in the night because Bill's dad, um, he's like um, paralyzed on half his body. Yep. And so the stroke recovery never happened for Bill's dad. So it, like it was serious at our house. And amazingly, my dad's still alive, but you can tell he had a stroke. And so, so like this got serious for me quickly. And a couple of things happened. One, I, I got on medication and then I started evaluating what else can I do? And I lowered salt intake like way down in my life. I actually, I actually reduced sodium so much I started getting dehydrated. <laughs> so I had to learn that there is actually a healthy amount of sodium you can take in your life. And then I had to rearrange my schedule, which was very humbling for me. And the doctor, basically, we went on, it was Christmas Eve when Bill had this doctor appointment with his own physician. And um, the doctor said, Bill, you're a people helper. I mean, you're a pastor. Right. If somebody came into your office with this erratic high blood pressure and basically two full-time jobs, you're a full-time author and a speaker and you're a full-time pastor, you're burning the candle at both ends. What would be your advice or what would be your wisdom? And I, I, with resignation, I said, well, some life changes are in order. And the doctor said, that's exactly right. And so I made the hard decision to resign as a senior pastor so that Pam and I could pursue the ministry that we knew God had given us together. Our uniqueness, yeah. speaking to couples and on um, parenting, you know, the intersection of God's love and God's wisdom. That's what love wise means. And I had to do that so I could get back in my routine because I had thought, well, I can cheat on my diet and I can, I, I can give up exercising for the cause. And it caught up with me. Yeah. And I had to get back to a, a regular exercise routine and I had to get back to a diet that was healthy. And in my family, that means a low sodium diet. And I need to keep my weight down so that the blood pressure would come under control. And the good news, it came under control for a while without medication. I was actually able to go off medication. Yeah. And then about For like a decade, you were yeah. off medication, which is great. And he looks like gorgeous. Um, thank, so, you. thank you. I would never <laughs> yeah, say that, but super thank you. Super healthy, yeah. And, and about two years ago, I got the second wake-up call, which I got in a, a traffic accident, which nobody ever wants to get in a traffic accident. But when I went to the doctor after the accident, um, they actually said to, to me, do you have somebody who can drive you? So I, I went to a clinic and they sent me to the emergency room and they said, do you have someone that can drive you? Because my blood pressure had, had skyrocketed again. And I, I was already exercising. I was already watching over my diet, but I had to reintroduce medication to keep my blood pressure down. And now we've got the, a new routine going. <laughs> so I've got to exercise, diet, and, and medication. And it's got my blood pressure back under control to where I can begin to operate at full speed. And we like saw that as like a little bit of a miracle. The car crash that could have killed him actually ended up saving his life That's right. because it's important to go to your doctor on a regular basis. And um, so we were in a new city and got a new doctor who loves God and wants to keep mm -hmm. Bill alive, living longer and stronger. So we're pretty excited about that. And the point is everybody gets wake up calls because we have to get refocused because none of us keep focused for the long term. We have to keep getting refocused and keep getting refocused and keep getting refocused because once something becomes a routine, you take it for granted and you lose focus.
And so my wake up call is very much connected to first place. And um, about the time that Bill's first wake up call happened, um, I was an author and speaker and we were going to um, ICRS, which is like a big conference. And um, I sat next to uh, Carol Lewis who's on the call and she was running first place at the time. And she challenged us to whoever wanted to get up at six o'clock in the morning, walk with her. And I was very out of shape. I'd been sitting, uh, cheering my boys on and not like working out like I should have been. And so I had gained probably 50, 60 pounds. So I was uh, not healthy, but I thought what a great way to spend time with like a godly woman. I'll get up at six in the morning and I'll go walking. And wow, she walked me under the table. I mean, she was Which so strong. Fast walker. <laughs> she was just so strong. And I thought I need to get my act together. And so I, I plugged into first place for health at that point. And I started losing weight and I started, um, you know, going to the first place events. And so got some friendship circles around me and going to wellness weeks. And so um, it's really started making some forward strides in my wellness. And I did really good for probably like four years or so. And then I had a super busy year. And lots of books came out, a lot of travel. We were on the road about um, 260 days that year. And about November, um, I was up in the altitude with Bill and we were doing a conference. And all of a sudden, I, my heart was going out of rhythm and um, it was racing really fast and I was out of breath. Um, and it was, I, a scary it, it was a very scary yeah. day. So I like laid down and I said, okay, hon, um, I'm just going to lay here and pray. You go ahead to the speaking thing to get us set up for the next session. And if I don't show up, just call 911. <laughs> and, um, it, it got my attention and, um, God began to speak to my heart. Pam, you know what to do. You know how to eat that you're plate should look like a rainbow, lots of fruits and vegetables, not a rainbow like a bowl full of Skittles, yeah, right. or a donut with sprinkles. Um, you've been cheating. Pam, you have been cheating. You've been like rationalizing bad health choices on the road, like, oh, a donut, why not five? Um, so it's catching up. The wheels are coming off the bus, girl. And so I went to Wellness Week that year. And um, they took my blood, and you know it's bad. Uh, when the nurse calls you, it felt like five minutes later. I'm sure it was like more like 20. But she called me as soon as she got the results, and she's like, you, you need to come to the hospital, like right now. And um, I'm like, what? And she's like, did you know that you're diabetic and your, your glucose is really high? And I said, well, I've been borderline for a while, but no, I didn't know that I had stepped over the line there. And she's like, no, this is serious. Like, can you come to the hospital? And I said, well, can I call my doctor? And because I, like, I'm from California and we're way out here. Oh, uh, like not close to any hospital. And she's like, yeah, probably, but yes, call your doctor right now. And so I called, um, a new doctor. See, cause insanity is doing the same thing over and, um, expecting a different result. And so my, um, regular doctor just kind of been blowing me off for like 10 years or so just in a rush to get their patients in and out. And, um, so I called my friend, uh, Mark Stingler, and he, he has a full theology degree and a full medical degree, and he was very holistic, and he, he took, he called me right back, personally, he called me right back, and um, I explained the situation, and he, he's like, gave me some great advice, he's like, I know that you aren't getting home right away, and so in the next four weeks, I just want you to eat, like, lean meat, a lot of vegetables, not much fruit, no sugar, like, low carbs, like, focus on the protein and focus on lots and lots of vegetables. And so I did that. But before, I didn't have a good attitude about it. I went downstairs to talk to my first place for health friends and leaders that were there. And I really was whiny. I was like, you guys, I have to eat like vegetables the rest of my life and uh, things that taste like cardboard. And um, I was really like pathetically whiny. And one of my friends, Vicki, who now runs First Place for Health, and she's like, Pam, I see how hard you work, and you're at every one of the workouts, and you're very athletic. You know, there is a skinny girl in there someplace. She's just bubble wrapped. You just need to find her. And I, 
I, he made me laugh and I'm like that. Okay. That encouraged me. Get rid of the bubble wrap. Get rid of the bubble wrap. <laughs> and so I, but I went upstairs and I was feeling like a huge hypocrite. See, I just written this book about, uh, 10 secrets of living strong, smart, and savvy. And first place for health was in it. I had written it a couple years before and I'm like, Lord, I wrote this book and I'm not like, obviously not living it out. Maybe you should just like, take me to heaven, Lord, just take me to heaven right now. Um, cause I'm not being a good example. And I called Bill on the phone. I'm like, I need some prayer here. I need some prayer. And so my husband prayed for me. And like, if there would have been any Ben and Jerry's, you know, or like chocolate bonbons in that place, I would have like, you know, uh, but there wasn't, there's only more green things. And so I went to bed and I prayed, Lord, you got, you got to catch my attitude up to where it needs to be. It's not in a good place. And so minister to me like in my sleep. That's what your word says in the Psalms that you'll do that for me. So I have, I have stinking thinking, I need your help. And so I went to sleep uh, after reading some Psalms, I went to sleep and just asked for a miracle in the morning. Well, my phone rang, um, well, it buzzed. Uh, my phone buzzed about 4.30 in the morning. And I'm up, I get these email devotionals um, from a woman who likes to quote some of my books in them on, by text message. And so at 4.30 in the morning, this is what my text message said. Get up. God has set his alarm clock. It's time to overcome every weight, every infirmity, every sickness, every bondage that has tried to strangle the physical, emotional, spiritual life out of you. It doesn't matter how long you've been bound up. Stop hitting the snooze button and get up. <laughs> Guess what I did? I got uh -oh. up. <laughs> yeah, and I just did the next right thing. And um, we'll talk about what those next right things are that I decided to do. But one of them was to get some focus going. And so I called on the phone. I said, every year, you know, it's January. And every January, we do a word of the year. And I've done it ever since I was 19 years old. And it's kind of like, um, if any of you are bowlers, like I'm not a good bowler, so I have to have those bumpers, you know, to keep the ball. And so word of the year is kind of like a bumper to me. It keeps me focused to where God wants me to go in that coming year. So and, I And normally we choose separate words for the right. year. But we decided that year we're gonna we're gonna have the same word. Same we're word. Gonna, we needed we're to help each other get back on track. Yeah, we needed to team up for victory. So we chose the same word, which was strong. Mm -hmm. And um, I chose the verse about um, out of uh, Joshua, Joshua one nine. 1, 9. Strong, yeah, and be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. I was afraid. Do not be discouraged. I was discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you, Pam and Bill. Uh, when you travel 260 days a year, I'll be with you. And so I'm like, that's a perfect verse for us. And then we like took pictures of like weights that spelled out strong and we posted that up and uh, we chose a song of the year, or, like stronger. Um, I wore a, um, first place for health body and soul t-shirt that said, stay strong. That was like my theme. And uh, by the end of that year, asking one question every day. Every decision was a clarifying question. Will this make our marriage stronger? Will this make my health stronger? Will this make my family stronger? Will what I'm about to do make me stronger? And at the end of that year, um, lost 50 pounds and have kept it Yay. off thanks to first place for help. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, Helen, it's all back to you now. Woo woo, that is right. Way to go, I love that. Um, Keeping it off is the hardest part, as we all know. Well, we want you to tell us something. We're wondering, in 2018, did you have a word that helped you? And we want to know about it. We want you to put it in chat, and we want you to use the drop-down box that says all panelists and all attendees, because we want everyone to know what your word might have been. So if you had a word for 2018, we would love for you to type it in chat right now. So go ahead and do it. And as I see a few come up, I'll read them for people that are watching our video. So did you have a word? I don't have any types in. I, maybe no one had a word. Is that possible? Like oh, that. there's no. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. We have transforming, obedience, perseverance, journey, bold, joy. Woohoo. Forgive quickly. Oh, that's a good one. Trust. Halt. All right. 
That's a first place for health one, for hungry, angry, lonely, tired. And we have um, a word for 2019, healed. Oh, nice. Okay, truth, structure. Ooh, structure, relationship, conquer. I'm scrolling back here to make sure I didn't miss any. There we go. All right. No, I think we're good. All right. We have uh, next, what else do we have? Conquer, relationship, uh, trust God. All right. That's some great ones. Well, um, we love that word. And another thing that we thought would be as we focus in on the word is to do a poll. And so we were wondering, have you ever had anything bad news, doctor bad news? So, so here is a poll. And to participate in the poll, you have to say you want to participate in it. And you can pick as many that apply to you. How many have you heard from the doctor said bad news to you? It, it said you had high blood pressure or you had diabetes or maybe you've heard cancer. Many of us have heard obesity arthritis, um, some of you have autoimmune disorders, something else. Some of you may have never had bad news from your doctor. So we're mm -hmm. saying, praise the Lord, you, have, you don't have anything. That, that would be awesome. So far, 24% have nothing. And I think they want to stay that way, I'm guessing. So go ahead. It looks like 66% of you have voted so far. So I'm going to leave it open for just a couple more seconds just to give anybody else that wants to participate. So high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, obesity, arthritis, autoimmune disorder, other or nothing. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I like that one a lot. All right, we've been up for a minute, so I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. And here are the results. You can see them on your screen. Not a surprise for first place. Obesity is 50% of you have heard that. Um, I can say I've heard that myself. 25% of you have nothing. That is praise the Lord. And you're here because you don't want to ever hear anything, I'm guessing. You want to keep that a true. And so next up, we have um, arthritis and high blood pressure are tied for 33%. And then we have diabetes and looks like then cancer and autoimmune disorder. So looks like everybody has a little bit of everything. You know, we have a little bit of everything. So, all right. Next up, Bill and Pam. <laughs> hey, we want to let everybody know that we'll be um, sending out a website link that will give the worksheet for the word of the year that we use at LoveWise and that Bill and I have used um, in, in our personal life to team up. Um, and it's going to um, be up at lovewise.com front slash fit, F-I-T. Um, and Helen will make sure that you get that too. But so you have some fun stuff coming your way to help you team up with the people that you love and gain that victory. So F was for focus for forward motion. And then the I is get information, information for inspiration. A lot of times we just need new good information into our heart and our mind. And um, I'm gonna let Bill like lead out with some good information from the Bible. What does the Bible say about wellness? Well, it's very clear in the Bible that God respects your body and God loves your body. He chose to house you in a body. And he, he's has, he has a lot of really honorable things to say. Like It's really easy in Christian circles to talk about our spiritual life and talk about the fact that our spirit is going to live forever. Well, your body's also, also going to live forever. Now, fortunately, this body that we have is going to go through decay so it can be resurrected into a body that will never suffer decay or illness again. But we do not want to underestimate the value of the body that God has given you. That's why the Bible always challenges us to take care of this body. It's not, it's not because we're bad people or we're prone to laziness or prone to mistreating ourselves. It's because God has so much honor for the body that he's given us that he wants us to take care of it. And I'm just going to give you three quick passages of the Bible that, that make the point that God thinks our body is really important. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? That God thinks so much about our body, he decided to take residence in us. So he wants us to take care of our bodies because he's living there too. 
<laughs> and then Psalm 139, for you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. So your body was woven together by God. And he has this incredible plan for you that includes operating in your body. So your body, it wasn't just thrown together. It wasn't just like kind of piecemealed. God actually wove you together and he gave you this incredible structure to live in. And so we want to treat it with the same honor that God treats it with. And then 1 Corinthians 9, verse 23. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone who runs aimlessly. I do not fight like a, a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself might not be disqualified for the prize. And this is an athletic picture that God has a plan for your life. God has a purpose for your life, and he's going to live out that purpose in your body. And that's why he wants us to take care of us. Now, we aren't all athletes. We aren't all supposed to go to extreme physical training. But the purpose that God has for you, he's going to live out in your body. So everything that you accomplish in your marriage, everything you accomplish in your family, everything you accomplish in your career is going to be in your body. And so your body is an amazing thing. And so God challenges us to take care of it. Be, and again, not because it's a struggle, not because he wants us to have a difficult life, but he wants us to take care of our body because he has plans for you in your body right. that, that are pretty exciting. And the better you take care of yourself, the easier it's going to be to live out your purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell he's a pastor? Yeah. He was my pastor for years. Love it. Um, of the good word that encourages us. You know, we get those good thoughts from God's right. word in our brain. It helps us make better choices. You know, when we feel loved and valued, mm -hmm. then we want to take care of ourselves. And, so, and before I pitch to Pam, the Bible always tells us the what? That we're supposed to take care of our bodies. We're supposed to learn self-discipline. Our challenge is to figure out the how. Because the how changes with generations and it changes with culture. So Pam, why don't you share some of the hows right. of how we can do what the Bible challenges us to do. Yeah, and so sometimes it's just really practical information. Um, you have that biblical um, rail, and then you need practical information. Yep. How do I make it work in my life to take good care of this temple? And so, you know, I mentioned that I, I got a new doctor. And so my doctor did a really great um, panel of tests, very in-depth, and he was going through all of the um, different results with me. and. Um, he asked me what medications I was on, and um, he said uh, to my, I said I was on um, antibiotics that I had been on since I was 14. Now, at this point, I'm like 44, and he's like, you have been on antibiotics that long? You've, like, killed your gut. Like, Pam, there's a reason why you gained all this weight. It wasn't just, you know, you weren't moving enough. There, there's a lot of things that are not working right that we have to correct. And I'm like, but I have to be on TV and I like get acne. And, and he's like, Pam, are you listening to yourself? If you keep on this <laughs> antibiotic, you're going to die. And then you won't be on TV. <laughs> right. And I said, I said, oh yeah, that is kind of weird. You know, I'll be dead and people come to my funeral and they'll look down and they'll say, oh, but look at that clear skin she has. So yes, sometimes we need dramatic change in our thinking. And so he set up a really great, um, food plan for me. I got tested for allergies as well to find out which foods were working for me personally and which foods I needed to change and adapt. And um, so a lot of times we need more information so we can very much personalize. Got a Fitbit, you know, so I'm tracking my food. I'm tracking how many steps I take, all of my workouts. Um, also jumped in more into first place, even began to, after that year of success, I wanted to lead a first place for health class. I started to lead online. And um, so that accountability was awesome. You know, as I have accountability, um, it makes me want to make really good choices. And so um, 
jumping into first place, going to some more of their um, events, going to nutrition classes, um, so I could learn more about like just the science behind the food. And um, we started taking cooking classes together, Bill and I, and we started cooking together. And there's this really good cookbook right there. You might like that might look familiar. Lisa Lewis wrote that for First Place for Health, and I love it. Um, so yes, lots of new things, new information that I needed to get on nutrition, on health, on working out, um, on just how my body was working. Um, what, how about my family history and what was I battling in my family history and how did I need to adapt? And so just personalizing that kind of information. And I have a worksheet that, um, I put in, um, 10 Secrets of Living Strong, Smart, and Savvy. And it's a worksheet you can take to your doctor. So you can get the numbers down to those important, you'll see the test to have taken um, and you'll see the places to record numbers like cholesterol and you know glucose and triglycerides and things like that, that just so you're more informed. Back it, to you. Yeah. Well, and let, let me make a plug for gaining new information. Because one of the characteristics you probably don't know about our family is that when, when we were first married and when we were having kids, we would not describe Pam as a great cook. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, like like she, would, she would feed our kids, but it was more, I got to get this done, rather than any kind of a, a, a culinary art. Right, right. My right. son one time was at a, my um, a friend's house and um, said something about, oh, your mom probably cooks that. And Brock said, yeah, if it doesn't come out of a box, she doesn't really cook it. And so I had some new learning on the cooking but, front. But then when she went through this process of learning how to eat better and, and got really serious about taking care of herself, she has become a remarkable cook. <laughs> like, like, it is amazing. The stuff we eat now, it, like it, it not only is good for us, but it tastes way better than what we used to eat 20 years yeah. ago. And for those of you who are listening, you think, well, I'm not a really good cook. I, it can always change. And, and not only has it changed, but you seem to enjoy it a oh, lot Oh, it's more. so fun. Like, it's, it's so fun, it's... and it's an adventure uh, to learn great new recipes and try yeah. them for your family. So and, I would yeah. describe Pam as an inspired chef today because of the information that she gained to get her health back. Yeah, first place had a lot to do with that. Mm -hmm. Raising my cooking skill, too. Hey, Helen, we have some more stuff uh, I think we're going to do, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, we have another poll. It goes with our next topic. And so for you guys, we're interested in finding out how active you are with your family, with your friends. And so if you're a single person, then you could enter, you could answer this question relative and you can only pick one. So it's a one answer kind of thing. And it's how often are you active together with family and friends? And so it could be rarely once per week, twice per week, or three or more times per week. And you just pick one and we're not going to see who answers this. This is not like um, no judging here. Just be honest. Um, your names will not be associated with these answers anywhere. And so just give us an idea of it. Um, I know you guys that are friends with me on Facebook know I always post my husband and I, we go on adventure at least once a week. We call it our adventure. We even call one of our cars our adventure car. Aww. It takes us on adventures. So uh, we like to do stuff together. So I agree. That is definitely something that has changed tremendously in my lifestyle is that. So, all right. It looks like most people, it's been open in that, uh, a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and end the poll. All right, guys, here you go. You can see the results. And so rarely is the winner at 45%. And then next up is three or more times per week. So interesting wow. that the second winner is the, the higher one. And then we're once per week and then twice per week. So that's where we are, Bill and Pam. Awesome. Well, that's encouraging that there are so many that are doing activities together with their um, spouse or with their family. And um, so one of the really important things that Bill and I decided we needed to do is get back to who we are, which is athletes. And so we decided, okay, some things need to change. We need to invest in finding activities we enjoy together. So why don't you share about some of the things we've discovered we like to do together? Well, I just want to encourage everybody. I, 
being healthy, it's not an activity, it's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And we, we have looked for ways to just stay active. Like, I, we know not everybody are, have that athletic mindset. We feel better about ourselves when we're doing something athletic. But, but what we had to discover, the ability just to stay active. And together. So, yeah, so it could be simple things like we don't pick the closest parking space. We pick a parking space that causes us to walk so we get extra steps in. And then we started asking each other, like, what can we do together active? Because Pam is a dancer. Like, she's always been in dance class. She's always done all kinds of ballet. I, you're not going to see me on a ballet floor. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> and I don't like going to classes where you do dancing. He went to Zumba with me one time. Everybody laughed so hard. I, yeah, they got exercise, but it was not doing Zumba. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think that's pretty common, that we have different styles in how we like to be active. Bill so runs. We, I only run if somebody chases me with a yeah. gun. So we started looking, what can we do together? And we just stayed at it. We stayed persistent. We kept trying things. A lot of things didn't work well. And we finally discovered two things, two things yeah. that we both like to do and we're both pretty good at. The first one was bicycle riding. Yeah, so we bought bikes. Yeah, so we found out that we don't always have to be competitive when we're on bikes. And so we can bike together and we enjoy that. Pam likes to talk too much when we bike. So I have a hard time <laughs> listening, but we both like to bike together. And then we discovered that we kayak really well together. Like Pam's a really good kayaker. And it, when you're in a tandem kayak, the person in front does all the steering. The person in the back does all the work. So it's a challenging relationship thing. <laughs> The person in the back has to follow the lead of the person in the front. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's good for your relationship. Yeah. At yeah, the same cooperate. time. Yeah. And what I discovered is Pam's really good at it. And so she's easy to follow when we're in a kayak. And so we discovered those two things that we can do together. And then we added some things back that we knew we enjoyed, but we had just in busyness let them drop out of our life, like dancing. We love dancing. Bill's a great dancer. And we're like, Let's look for more opportunities to do that, even if it's just in our living room. You know, that burns off many calories and get that wee fit out with our grandkids and do a dance party. Um, so we're just looking for those opportunities. Um, and now with our grandkids, we take them to the park and our goal is to do everything our grandkids do. And like, they're totally into parkour and <laughs> like, it's crazy fun trying yep. to keep up with them. Um, and then the other thing that we started doing is we started shopping differently. Yeah. Like here at the marina where we live, every, every Sunday there is a farmer's market. So rather than drive to the store and walk the minimum amount that we need to, we will kayak over to the farmer's market. We'll walk through the farmer's market to do our shopping. And then we'll kayak the food back to our boat. And it just added a layer of activity to our life. And we realized we don't always have to shop conventionally. Right. We can shop more actively. And we have saddlebags for our bikes. So we can bike to the regular store and then bike home um, with our groceries too. And so like there's kind of this new rule. Uh, if we buy it, we need to like carry it mm -hmm. somehow. And that keeps and, us. And you know that if you try to do that as an individual, you just grumble. Like if I have to mm -hmm. walk to the store by myself, I'm like, I can't believe that Pam sent me to the store. I got to do all that. It's heavy. But, but together. If, if we go together, we tell jokes to each other. We take turns carrying the heavy bag. We talk about how we would do it differently next time. And it's there's a built-in distraction when you go with the yeah. person you love that you don't get if you go alone. So as difficult as it may be, talk to your family about how can we get active together? Mm -hmm. Because when you do it together, you tend to stay at it longer rather than doing it as an individual. Because when you have to convince yourself that you're good company, <laughs> you're probably going to be more, uh, you're probably not going to be as active as you would if you did it with somebody else. And one of the things that we started with Bill's health crisis, so this would be a decade ago, we got back in the habit of like daily prayer walking together. And we try to do it, you know, at sunset. Now we live on a boat. It's so beautiful here. So that's a great time for us to what we call walk the dock. And we pray together about our, our life. And it keeps us on the same page. And that also leads to really good conversations. And um, those good conversations lead to a little bit of romance. And so um, in uh, Red Hot Romance Tips, uh, this is a little book, yeah, Ooh. and Helen's going to share about uh, it a in a minute. But we give a list of things that you can do to 
you know, things you need to go take up um, in order to be active. So maybe you need to take to the dance floor, you know, line or swing or ballroom, take to the water, kayak, jet ski, water ski, paddleboard, surfing, windsurfing, uh, take to the air, parasail, uh, skydive, glider, take to the wheels, bike, motorcycle, skates, take to the ice and snow, ski, snowboarding, ice skating, snowshoeing, which we love, sledding, take up a racket, um, tennis, table tennis, badminton, racquetball, take a swing, baseball, golf, um, softball, take a hike, um, backpack, stroll, or walk the beach, that's what we do, we're very close to the beach, and then take advantage of uh, we Technology, um, we Fit, you, all kinds of sports you can do electronically, Take up a hunt um, with a camera, a rifle, bow and arrow. Uh, take to the gym. Go to CrossFit. We have a coach that um, one of our kids is a CrossFit coach. In fact, all of our well, tell me about our kids. Well, one of the things that keeps us uh, moving is we all three of our sons are coaches. Two of them professionally, and one of them is a hobby. So our oldest son is a high school football coach. Our middle son is a strength coach at the University of Louisville. Right there I have gear. And our youngest son just got a, certified as a level one CrossFit coach. And so they are active by nature. And then all of our grandkids are active. And so one of our goals is to be able to keep up with our family because the pressure's on. And they married, um, all their wives are equally active. Some of them are wellness coaches as well. So a lot of accountability in the Farrell family. And, uh, to, and so we try to be active as a family too. And the good thing about being active as a family is, you know, it's oftentimes free. Taking a hike with your family is free. So it doesn't have to cost a lot right. to be active. And, and let, me, let me talk for a moment to the people who are listening. And you're kind of rolling your eyes. Like, yeah, active, active, active. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You guys find it easy to be active. Let, let me just say that activity becomes a habit. That's an interesting thing that God has done with our body. Remember, we learned we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Well, when you exercise with other people, endorphins get released into your body. Yeah. So at first, it might be uncomfortable, and you might have to get over the initial inertia. But once you start being active, you start to feel better because your body releases these endorphins that there are natural painkillers and they're a mood enhancer. So you start to just feel better about your life. And the other thing that happens when you exercise is at some point you generally start laughing because somebody's going to do something. Somebody might uh, do something awkward or they might do something funny and you're going to start laughing. And when you laugh together, it's interesting that you bond together with the people you're laughing with. Yeah. Oxytocin actually gets released into your body when you laugh exuberantly and the people you're with, you get bonded to them. And so even though it can be difficult to get started, once you do something, and it can be as simple as like Pam said, taking a hike a together. A um, you, like you get this chemical assistance because of the way God designed our bodies, that you get more connected to the people you're exercising with and you feel better about yourself and feel better about life. And so it's worth the, the kind of pushing yourself and it's even worth pushing the family a little bit because usually one person has the idea and everybody's like I don't want to do that <laughs> just stay at it because once you actually start doing the activity the mood changes and it's well worth it right right so the happy endorphins get uh, released and then you laugh together you're bonded which um then leads to a little bit of red hot monogamy for the married couples out there oftentimes um, there's a study that's out that says that couples that exercise together actually have more red hot monogamy so woo we'll end on that high note well, <laughs> well pam mentioned the book we always get pushback when we show the books oh, like yeah. okay we have a book for the the wives you know the wives are supposed to do this wives are supposed to do that like i like, have a red hot wife challenge that i run right. a couple times a year that we'll tell you about and so a lot of people like well, why all this stuff for a wife? Like, he needs to be like, wow, and me. Right. <laughs> well, the good news is there is an app for that. Because we know that men don't typically read Yeah, books. they don't typically read books. But guys always have their phones in their hands. And so uh, I just decided that, you know what, I'm going to put the best information I have. And we are going to do this as an app. And so I created an app called Her Best Friend. You can get it at any of the 
any of the app stores. So it's available on iTunes. It's available on Apple Store. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying Google. to find it on my phone here. Yeah. Um, it's a free app, so it costs you nothing. Yeah. And um, the way this app works is one idea a day comes to your phone on how to be your wife's best friend. There it is, right there. Her best friend. And one idea a day. If you like the idea, do it. If you don't like the idea, just ignore it and wait for tomorrow because a new idea is coming. And there are ideas in here on how to pray together, on how to have active dates together, how to compliment your wife, how to start conversations with her so that you can um, enhance your relationship with your wife. And ladies, help us succeed at this. Please don't get the app and every day show you, hey, you didn't do this one. <laughs> yeah. Just help us out. Right? Counterproductive to do that, right? <laughs> I do want to give away one of these copies. I, um, I'm going to let Helen chat about it for a minute and then I'll tell you um, who's going to win. Yeah. Well, I did want to put in a, pl uh, a little plug for this little book, too. It's a little book. Um, Pam runs a little uh, back last uh, December. She ran 26 days where every day was a different thing. And she did it through, um, I think, Facebook. Facebook. And I read it's the a book. Private Facebook group. Yeah. And it really was, uh, I, I shared it with some of my friends, some of the things, the ideas I was learning, and I really loved it. My husband absolutely loved it. <laughs> and so uh, I just want to say, you know, take advantage of that if uh, the next time Pam does that, because it really was fun. And you can go ahead and buy this little book. It's, it's a real short read and has lots of great ideas. And one of them is to have fun and get moving with your spouse. And so it's uh, just consider it a reference for today. Yeah, so Pam, yeah. How can, who's going to win the book today? So um, we're gonna see if anybody has a birthday or an anniversary today. If, if you're like here with your spouse on a date night, you'll for sure, like <laughs> you'll probably win that one. So does anybody text like, yes, it's my birthday. Yes, it's my anniversary. Or maybe it's your anniversary this week, like us. Yep. Our 39th anniversary is on Friday. Hey. So Yay. let us know if it's your birthday or your anniversary. So in chat, you would tell us if it is your birthday or your anniversary today, this week. And if we don't have this week, this month. Right. <laughs> we'll just keep throw, casting the net a little. All right. So we have a birthday on the 19th. Finda has a, and her husband and Finda and Domingo have a huge a passion for family health. So I would say Finda and Domingo should get this. Yay. Awesome. yay. Mm. Well, I hope you enjoy it a lot. And um, again, we're, um, if you want to find us, um, we're at love wise, love dash wise, the intersection of God's love and God's wisdom. And we are always mm. posting, um, about wellness, emotional, spiritual, physical. So first place for health and the ferals, we make a good team because we have the same values. We want you to live long and strong. Mm -hmm. And we are so excited that um, Helen and Vicki invited us to come do this um, webinar. So I just want to remind you of the tips to be fit. You want focus for that forward uh, motion. And then you want Inspire, you want information for inspiration and last teamwork for transformation. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, we have time for a few questions. So if anybody wants to send us a question through the question and answer section on your screen, there's a little Q box at the bottom and you could type in a question. So we have just a few minutes and we'll okay. let that go. Go ahead, while Bill. We're, while we're waiting for questions, I just want to remind everybody, you know, the, the enemy of intimacy is the same enemy of, of health, and that is responsibility. The more responsible we, come, we become in our life, the, the, the more challenge we have to keep our relationships connected and our body healthy. Because very few people I've ever met set out to be unhealthy. It's just life got in the way. You become right. more responsible and the average adult doubles his or her responsibility every 10 years. So at 30, you have twice the responsibility you had at 20 and at 40, you have four times the responsibility you had at 20. There's a reason why you feel tired. <laughs> and, yeah. and so most of us, we struggle with health because we're becoming more responsible people. And we want to challenge you as you grow in your responsibility, keep reminding yourself, I need to stay healthy so I can keep up with the opportunities God's given us. And don't allow the, just the grind of life to steal from you 
your ability to keep moving and to keep enjoying your life. Yeah, find that sustaining motivation. Ours is we want to be at all of our grandchildren's graduations and yep. weddings in good health. Right, because if, if you're struggling with your health, it's probably because your life became more responsible. And rather than, than dealing with stress through activity, you dealt with stress through more eating. It's just a real common thing that we most of us do. And so the good news is when you start becoming more active, your stress level is going to go down and you'll be able to handle the responsibility God's given you in a, in a, in a better balance. Nice question. All right. So we have some questions. Um, one question is uh, about the keto diet. Do we have any thoughts? And so I would say from a first place for health perspective, we follow the USDA food plan, the choose my plate.org plan, which is uh, a, a certain amount of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean meats, healthy oils, and dairy, calcium rich foods. Now, that being said, if your doctor were to put you on a keto diet, then we would tell you whatever your health professional is recommending is the, is the food plan that you should follow. If you were to join a first place for health uh, group, though, we would teach you the, um, the, the USDA's government recommended um, food plan. And so the next one is how much weight loss per week is a healthy weight loss? Mm -hmm. And so um, that's a good question. In first place, we would normally say a half a pound to two pounds is what we would say. If you were going to lose more than two pounds week after week after week, um, your, your leader would suggest that you should eat more food. Um, all of us know how to starve and lose weight. That is something that we, for somehow, we all learned how to do. But as Bill said earlier, we're going for a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. We want yeah. you to eat enough food that your body is going to continuously lose weight until you reach your healthy goal and then maintain that weight. And so really more than two pounds is usually considered too much. Now that said, most of us lose more the very first few weeks, but after yeah. that, it's average. Yeah. I lost over a hundred pounds and it took me four years. I don't necessarily recommend that level of weight loss, but that worked for me. Right. Um, and ours was uh, 50 pounds in, you know, one year. So it's about a pound a week for me. Yeah. yeah. Good right. for you. And I would just add to this whole thing that a healthy lifestyle, for some people, it's a math problem because some people are analytical and they're, for the weight you want to maintain, there's a certain number of calories you need to take in to maintain that weight. And when you train your body to get used to that amount of calories, your body's going to respond by being the weight that you want it to be. For other people, it is an emotional journey. And so if you're on the emotional journey, you need to learn how to make decisions because our emotions always follow our decisions. So when you decide to eat the amount of food that will keep you at the weight you want to be, you feed the emotional journey you're on and you convince yourself emotionally to be healthy. And first place, I love it because they offer all of that. There's special events yep. for meeting that emotional need. Like, why am I drawn to overeating or eating things that might not be good for me? Or why is exercise so hard? And a lot of it has roots way back. And so first place offers some really awesome yep. things. And then in your group, I mean, you could you figure out the math problem in the new material that's coming out. And I'm sure Helen will tell us a little bit about that as well. But first place has pretty much has all the answers that I've ever needed plus the support, the emotional support. And so I love teaching my online first place class because I have friends now in all across the United States that are in my support system. And for those of you who want to start losing weight, please don't panic. Just get on a new path that will allow you to, to, to live a healthy lifestyle. And eventually you will look in the mirror and say, wow, look at what we've accomplished. Yeah, small steps add up in a big way over time, says my friend. Dana Dimitri, ageless woman. <laughs> well, it is true. Um, we have virtual groups that are posted now. They're open right now for people that are already in virtual groups to register. Um, public registration opens on December 24th. So if you're interested in getting into one of our virtual groups, um, you can find that online at the First Place for Health website and look under Getting Started, and you'll see online groups as one of the options. But also, um, as um, I don't remember, Pam may have suggested we have new materials. We have a new member kit, a new leaders kit for starting groups. And so if you are not in a group, and maybe you're like me, um, the Lord called me to start a group, and I was overwhelmed. I weighed 274 pounds, and 
thought maybe God had made a mistake. But as it turns out, he had a wonderful plan that included me losing weight and getting to a healthy weight. And so uh, maybe that's you. Maybe you are um, going to be in a group and lead a group and start a group. And so um, our My Place Leadership Kit has everything you need to get a group started. And so we would encourage you, um, like us, and we also have some videos out. If you go to our website and look under YouTube is um, a link to our YouTube channel. We have many leadership videos on how to get started and how to use it. And as soon as our new materials are here, I'll be recording some new videos on how to use our new materials. So it looks like we have two more questions. Let's see. So, oh, where, maybe where is Pam's group? Pam leads a, uh, a, a separate, uh, a group that she leads that's kind of a closed group already. She already has enough people. So but I did what you said. I started it because I wanted yeah. to spend time with leaders that were directors of women's ministries, pa pastors, wives, and authors, because we, we carry so much responsibility taking care of other people. I wanted us to take care of ourselves. So I knew that we would be good iron sharpening iron. And that's the benefit of starting your own group is you can invite the people that strengthen you into, into the group to live life and do life together and get well together. Um, so that's a positive. Somebody asked too about what the name of this book was. And so it's Red Hot Romance Tips for Women. We also have Red Hot Monogamy, which is a book um, on you know, marriage um, at, at our LoveWise website too. So those are two relation and 52 ways to wow your husband that has some active dates in it as well. But this one is the one that you do the little challenge with me uh, once a year for 26 days that Helen did. And for those of you guys that, okay, what's first place for health? You're here because you know Pam and Bill. Well, welcome. We're here. First place is a Christian weight loss ministry and we help people lose weight. Um, our Bible verse, Mark um, 1230, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, mind, and strength. Um, we look at our health from all four sides. And our first place uh, name comes from Matthew 633, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. The cost of a member kit, someone asked, is our new member kit is $79.99, and that includes your Bible study, everything you need to get started. And then you it's done in 12-week sessions. And so the next session, the second session you do, you would buy a new Bible study, which would be $19.99. So subsequent sessions are a lot less expensive. If you wanted to plug into one of our virtual groups, that is uh, $44.99 is the cost for our virtual groups. But there's also groups all over the country. So you could go to our website. The fastest way to get there is to put FP, the number four, H.com and go to get started. And there's a zip code search. You can see if there's any groups that are starting by you. And so we, uh, you'll get that information in the email I will send tomorrow. Um, about 24 hours. Tomorrow night, you'll get an email with links to Bill and Pam's information and to information about First Place for Health. And you know that um, online price is a deal when you think about it. It's like three bucks a week. Like seriously, that's, that's not even a coffee. And so it's a small investment that pays off in a big way. Thanks, Pam. Well, our time is up, guys. I think we've answered most of the questions. So um, for those of you that don't have a group near you, then consider starting a group or doing a virtual group. Otherwise, we are so glad you're here. That's what our ministry is about, to bring wellness to the Christian community. And along the way, most of us discover a much deeper relationship with Christ. I would say everybody discovers a much deeper relationship with Christ because we're transformed. So we're fit. Thank we're you. fit. We're and fit. We're having fun doing it. Yes, we are. So Pam and Bill, thank you for joining us. Thank you everyone for attending. And we'll see you next month on our webinars. Thank Good you everyone. all of you and aloha to Helen. <laughs> Bye everybody.